Let's talk about the total internal reflection in prism. But before this, what is prism? We must have clear idea about the prism. Prism can be defined like this. Prism is a three-dimensional solid having flat faces and two identical ends which are called bases of equal cross-section throughout its length. Looking at this definition, we can understand clearly it has four different points. First, it is three-dimensional solid. Second, it has flat faces. Third, it has two identical ends which is called base. And fourth, throughout the length, it has equal cross-section area. Let's have diagram of prism. This is prism and this is also prism. Looking at this diagram, we can understand very clearly that it is three dimensional solid because it has length, breadth and height. And in all these cases, they have flat faces. Here we have three flat faces, here also three flat faces, but here four flat faces and here five flat faces. And all of them have two ends which are called base. Each of the base have equal area. In this case, these two are the base which lies in opposite to each other and they have equal area in the same way. And here also two bases lies in opposite to each other and they have equal area. In this case also these two are the bases. And in this pentagonal prism, we have two bases like this. But there are some other objects which are not prism. We can verify with the help of this definition. In this case, two ends are not identical. One is rectangular, another is pointed. And that's why this is not a prism. It doesn't have equal area throughout its length because these two cut verifies the same. In this case also this is not the prism because two bases doesn't have equal area and if we cut them through the length then it won't have equal area. In the same way this is also not the prism. It seems to be similar base but the area of the base is not equal. If we cut them then we will not get cross section area equal. But in case of this this is not the prism because it doesn't have flat faces. That's why first four are prism but second four are not prism. Remember this prism is three dimensional solid. It has different faces and it has two identical bases and equal cross section throughout its length. In the physics lab, triangular prism is very common and it is used for the total internal reflection in different instruments also. What is it exactly? A prism having three rectangular faces and two triangular bases is called triangular prism. Two types of triangular prism are normally used in laboratory. One is called equilateral triangular prism. It appears like this and in triangular shape all the sides are equal in equilateral triangular prism. But another one is right angle triangular prism. It looks like this. In this triangular shape, one of the angle is right angle. This is triangular prism which we use in laboratory for total internal reflection. Let's have a look how total internal reflection in equilateral triangular prism. This is equilateral triangular prism. All three angles of this triangular prism are equal and it is 60 degree. If a ray of light comes from one of its face in such a way that it is traveling through normal, then it passes straight without bending. But it cannot come out from another face because here if we plot a normal then this angle of incidence at this place is 60 degree. The reason is very simple. This angle is 90 degree and this one is 60 degree and sum of three angles of a triangle should be 180 degree. 90 plus 60 becomes 150 and 180 minus 150 gives 30 degree. That's why this angle should be 30 degree. And we have now a perpendicular at this place. This perpendicular makes an angle of 90 degree with this face. And if this one is 30 degree, then remaining angle is 60 degree. Thus, we can declare that angle of incidence is 60 degree at this face. And we know that critical angle for glass is 42 degree only and the angle of incidence is greater than 42 degree. So instead of refraction, it reflects back in the same medium and this process is called total internal reflection. And we know that total internal reflection follows the law of reflection. That's why angle of reflection will be 60 degree. But at this point, the ray of light is traveling through normal. So it passes straight without bending. This way, total internal reflection takes place in equilateral triangular prism which turns light in another direction. 
Now let's talk about the total internal reflection in right angle triangular prism. Right angle triangular prism has one of the angle 90 degree and remaining two are 45 degree. If a ray of light enters into it like this, making an angle of 90 degree with this face, then it is traveling through normal. That's why it passes straight without bending. And when it is strike another face here, then the angle of incidence will be 45 degree. The reason is very simple. This triangle has three angles and this angle is 90 degree. Another angle is 45 degree. 90 plus 45 becomes 135 and remaining angle should be 45 degree. Total is 180 degree. If this is 45 degree, then certainly remaining angle of 90 degree is 45 degree. And if angle of incidence is 45 degree and light is traveling from glass to the air, then it is more than 42 degree critical angle. That's why light reflects back in the same medium and angle of reflection will be 45 degree. Now this ray of light is traveling through normal for this space and that's why it passes straight without bending. If the same right angle triangle is taken in this way, one of the angle is 45, another is 90, another is 45 and light is traveling through this face, then it is traveling through normal so it passes straight without bending. But for another surface it makes an angle of 45 degree and so total internal reflection takes place because light is traveling from glass to air and angle of incidence is 45 degree which is greater than critical angle 42 degree. That's why total internal reflection takes place and the angle of reflection will be 45 degree. Now when it is strike another face at this place then again it makes an angle of 45 degree with the normal and it is greater than critical angle so total internal reflection again takes place with an angle of 45 degree it reflects back. And lastly when it comes to the same face then it is traveling through normal so it passes straight without bending. This way total internal reflection takes place in right angle triangular prism. Right angle triangular prism can be used to bend light in 90 degree in this first case it is seen and it can be bent to the same direction I mean to say in 180 degree in this second case. Now let's have a look how it turns light in 180 degree and 90 degree in different devices. This is periscope first device and the second one is binocular. Periscope is used to see the object which lies at height and if a ray of light is coming from the object then total internal reflection takes place in this prism and it bends like this and when it comes to another prism again total internal reflection takes place like this if someone is watching from this side then he will be able to see the object which is at the height from the lower side it is used in submarines in second case this is binocular let's say we have an object towards this direction where binocular is written and two rays of light is coming from that direction from the object and when it enters into the prism then total internal reflection takes place like this and when again it tends to move away from the prism then total internal reflection takes place again total internal reflection takes place what i told you just before this and lastly when it comes out we can see the object from this place object can be seen clearly because the intensity of light is not affected in the process of total internal reflection. In this way, prism is used in periscope and binocular to turn light in 90 degree and 180 degree. Okay, I want to stop now. We'll meet in another class.